Hi, I'm your host, Sagan Bharatiya, and welcome to our series on tech predictions for 2021. Our next oracle is Sirish Raghuram, co-founder and CEO of Platform9. Before I ask you to pick up your crystal ball, can you please tell me a bit about Platform9? So Platform9, uh, for those of you who aren't aware, we are a company that makes it easy to run open source based uh, hybrid clouds across any combination of private, public, and edge environments. Uh, we were founded by four early VMware engineers, myself included, and you know, we take open source systems that are becoming the de facto lingua franca of cloud, like Kubernetes, and we make it easy to operationalize them uh, by, by delivering them as a service. So it's an open source fabric based on Kubernetes, available as a service. Just bring your own hardware to run a private cloud, a hybrid cloud, or an edge cloud, uh, whatever your, your business needs may be. No. Can you please pick up your crystal ball and tell me what predictions you have for 2021? Yeah, I think it's a really interesting time in technology. Uh, Sapnil, there's so much happening uh, in society and I think uh, in, in technology itself and so forth, right? So I think when I thought about your question, a few big things came to my mind, right? Um, I think one of, you know, obviously there's a really interesting times in terms of politics and society and I think there's a growing sense of awareness of the power that big technology companies are having over the world and society at large. Uh, last week's incidents at the Capitol, whatever your, your political leanings may be, obviously people have a realization that technology companies are having a greater and greater impact on the world. And I think that um, some, of the, some of the recent conversations I've, ha I've been having with people is there's a heightened sensitivity to the control that big tech companies have, uh, especially, and in the cloud space, I think, uh, these big cloud providers have been growing uh, like leaps and bounds because they have a very valuable uh, offering that they provide. But I think enterprises are going to have to really figure out how do they manage their business risks, business continuity, vendor management, and, and diversification uh, as big tech companies continue to get stronger and stronger. And probably you see new policies and regulations in 2021 in terms of regulating the power that big tech companies have. And specifically in the cloud space, I think it will force a renewed interest in open source based clouds. Uh, so I think there'll be renewed interest in, in Kubernetes and open source uh, you know, technologies such as Kubernetes as a way to, to kind of mitigate the amount of dependency on large tech companies uh, for their cloud infrastructure. So that's my, my first prediction, especially given the times we live in, is uh, a backlash against uh, the, the dependence and, and control that big tech companies will have uh, will will force enterprises to have a renewed interest in open source based clouds such as Kubernetes. My second prediction uh, has to do with uh, a really interesting development that's happening. Uh, I think it's right on the cusp. Uh, in the fall of last year in FY20, we saw the Apple iPhone come out with iPhone 12, uh, and the biggest headline feature there was 5G support. And you saw the Android ecosystem also come out with uh, phones that have 5G support. Um, and 5G networks are, are in the midst of a rollout. Uh, it's very early days yet, but uh, you're seeing some really large carriers start to roll that out. And why that is interesting is I think it represents a major new greenfield opportunity for infrastructure deployment. Um, because 5G inherently is a distributed technology. You can't run 5G networks with a single public cloud uh, data center running all of your software that is involved in supporting a 5G network. It involves distributing software that supports the 5G network and the applications that are being consumed by, uh, that, are, that are actually gonna consume 5G networks as well across you know, a very geographically distributed area worldwide. That is the first consideration. And the other consideration is uh, because of the emergence of containers and Kubernetes as a technology, uh, for the last several years, the entire 5G supply chain has been moving to standardize on containers and Kubernetes as a delivery format uh, to deliver software solutions that support these 5G networks. So the combination of the distributed nature of uh, telephony and, and tel uh, cell phone infrastructure, and with the, the fact that Kubernetes is now the standard that uh, this entire ecosystem and supply chain has standardized on, is gonna mean that I think 5G deployments may become the largest growth opportunity in Kubernetes, and therefore one of the largest growth opportunities in, in cloud infrastructure. So if you look at, obviously the public cloud is growing, but edge growth is gonna really make uh, massive progress in, the, in FY21, driven by 5G as, as you know, the, the spearhead, right, of, 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 that, um, of that growth momentum. So 5G networks 
is going to be a massive growth opportunity for Edge, massive growth opportunity for Kubernetes and for cloud infrastructure in general. And you see a lot of companies uh, ranging from hyperscalers like Amazon, Azure, Google, uh, to I think uh, independents such as VMware, Red Hat, um, Nutanix, maybe Pure Storage, uh, Cisco, uh, all the major infrastructure companies are going to look at this 5G market and say, how do we position ourselves to get a bigger share of that market? Uh, and I think it's a very exciting time uh, to be in that space. Uh, and Platform 9 in particular, obviously, we have a lot of wins in that space. So we are very excited to see what's happening in that market. My third prediction has to do around Kubernetes and Kubernetes growing up, so to speak. Um, it's been, a, it's been a really interesting time in the Kubernetes ecosystem. And um, we've seen a lot of progress be made uh, over the last few years. But even today, if you go look at who is really very successful with Kubernetes, I think a lot of uh, obstacles remain in the technology because of which if you look at the companies that say, hey, we have had like massive transformative benefit from Kubernetes, it is still limited, I think, to very large companies that have been able to invest in it in a very large way. And why is that? I think there are a few barriers that, that make it hard to kind of succeed with cloud native projects. And the first one is that uh, the, the complexity is still very high. Uh, there's different dimensions to complexity. There's at least three, right? There's the complexity of learning how to use microservices and go from being run, developing monolithic applications to running microservices applications. I think people are getting more and more skilled with that. There is the complexity of how do you actually run Kubernetes, uh, manage services like Platform 9 SaaS managed Kubernetes, the rise of Google Anthos and Amazon's EKS Anywhere obviously provide a solution that makes it easy to operationalize Kubernetes. But a third problem remains, which is once you have an app that you're trying to run in, in Kubernetes and you have like managed services that kind of make the operational care and fitting of the, the Kubernetes environment easier, it still takes a lot of effort for ongoing maintenance, troubleshooting, debugging applications that are running in Kubernetes. And I think that that is a major problem that needs to be addressed because ultimately, if enterprises find that it's far too hard to get realized value from, from you know, actually adopting microservices, if the barrier to success is too high, many people will not get past that barrier. So I think this is the time for Kubernetes to go from to cross the chasm from being successful in early visionary companies to be something that mainstream enterprises are actually able to not just be interested in, but actually succeed in. In order for that to happen, that complexity barrier needs to come down. And my prediction is that you're gonna see uh, a lot of progress in that regard in FY21, because obviously we, you know, having the vantage point that we do in Platform 9, this is one of the biggest things that we are working on is making it easier for people to realize value from Kubernetes and, and making it more uh, accessible to the mainstream enterprise. So that's my third major prediction for FY21. That's great. Now, can you tell me what is going to be a focus of Platform 9 in 2021? Because if you look at the company, you guys evolved you know, from early days of OpenStack and then you know, as the industry is transforming, the company itself is evolving. And despite all the chaos and, and challenges of FY20, we actually had a very, very good FY20 like on almost all metrics of the business. And as a team, I think, uh, our team stayed healthy and, you know, uh, knock on wood, uh, it's been a very good year considering the macro situation that I think the world has faced at large. So I think in FY21, our priorities are um, to, we, we've seen some really large wins in the second half of FY20. Uh, we've been OEM by multiple large providers in the 5G space. I'm not at liberty to disclose them today, uh, but I think we have, um, in the 5G space, it's um, all these network functions which you know have have complex requirements. If you look at scheduling, if you look at performance, if you look at uh, network uh, control and predictability and latency, there's advanced requirements. Uh, and so there's a lot of work that we're doing to make sure that our platform is uh, you know carrier grade and and really works just it it just works in the 5G context. And that's easier said than done because. Uh, this is a very specialized use case, and you're looking at people actually running radio networks on Kubernetes. Um, and I think so. that's a major area of investment for us because edge clouds are a huge priority for us. We've been seeing a lot of success there. But, and in edge, 5G is uh, obviously one of the major, I think, drivers of edge. And the relationships that we have in 5G 
mean that we have a huge delivery obligation there to because um, there's a lot of uh, you know service providers and enterprises worldwide who are going to be using our technology via our partners. Uh, and so that is a huge product priority for us is to invest in that carrier grade experience that just works, supporting everything from like radio networks to to voice core and other services in the 5G space. Another major priority for the company is last year, one of my highlights of FY20 is we launched a free tier self-serve motion. Uh, so there's a, in March of 2020, uh, uh, completely unrelated to COVID, but uh, just before uh, COVID actually kind of took hold in the United States, we made our free tier product available. And I've been delighted to say that in the second half of FY20, every month, we're seeing about a 20% growth uh, in the number of active users in, in the free tier user base. And our goal is to, to grow that uh, significantly in the coming year um, and, and actually increase that growth rate, if possible, to 30%. And this is where, you know, in talking to so many hundreds and you know, thousands of people who have registered for the free tier, tried using it, and have actually been using it, our realization has been uh, some of these insights that I shared with you in terms of the complexity barrier for Kubernetes. Platform 9 makes Kubernetes, right, Kubernetes cluster management very easy, but we don't yet solve the problem of developers who are actually, DevOps engineers who are actually trying to take an application and run it on a Kubernetes cluster still face a high complexity bar in terms of ongoing uh, care and feeding and troubleshooting of those environments. So that is a major area of investment for us is to simplify that, that complexity in Kubernetes uh, and make it easier for people to come in, sign up, try the product for free, use it for free, right? No strings attached and realize value. Uh, and ultimately, if they realize enough value, they'll go on to be uh, become paid customers uh, for the company. And a, th a third major priority for us is in terms of our, our uh, go-to-market. We, um, we, in the last year, in addition to the free tier and the 5G space, we, we had some really big wins in um, some large industry verticals. One of the world's largest uh, retailers is, has standardized on Platform 9 running in their stores uh, in, in, and this is a, a global retailer, um, very household name. Again, I'm not at liberty to disclose. A very large retailer in Europe has been uh, able to succeed with Platform 9 in, in a hybrid cloud context. So retail is a major focus for us uh, in go-to-market. Uh, 5G is obviously a major focus for us in, in terms of go-to-market. Uh, we have many large tech companies that are using Platform 9. These could be anything from like realtors, online realty companies, um, real estate companies to tech providers in the networking space and others. And, and you know, helping those customers grow and growing that customer base is obviously a huge priority for the company. So three major priorities for the company uh, that I outlined, uh, investing in the, in the whole product experience for carrier grade 5G as the 5G network rollouts, rollouts happen and supporting our partners in that space, um, supporting our and investing in our uh, product-led motion, which is a self-serve, free tier that people can just sign up and use, making it easy for them not just to use Platform 9's Kubernetes stack, but actually be successful with Kubernetes uh, and, and some of the complexity problems that I outlined earlier. And then scaling our go-to-market um, across all of the different verticals that we're seeing so much growth um, in. Uh, these are the three big company priorities for FY21. Awesome. Uh, Sirish, uh, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about your prediction. I would love to have you again in the December this year to see, of course, which of your prediction turned out to be true and also to get your set of predictions for next year. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, Sopna, my pleasure. And uh, thank you for having me. And I look forward to reviewing this uh, in December with you. <laughs>